Hey guys, Spirit of Fear here, bringing you Spy Tactics 102. Today we have guest star Darkstar as the spy, and we have our buddy Drake being the stab victim. Say hi guys. Hi. I still hate every single one of you. I love you, Drake. Alright, now with today we'll be going over the spy and his, well, some of his weapons and the different types of trick stabs that you can do and some reasoning behind the different moves spies make. Now Dark, what would you say is the best competitive loadout for a spy? Uh, I would have to say the best competitive loadout would probably be Ambassador because uh, even in you know just normal competitive, a 102 damage is very big. You get that on a medic, you are gonna be he's gonna be put in the red. That opens up for one scout scatter shot, a rocket, a sticky, a pipe bomb, anything really pretty much. And unless you're not good with the headshots on it, then unless you you're go not stuck. good with the headshots. If you're not, you know, if you if you don't have that good of an aim, I would recommend just going default revolver and going with survivability. Uh, with your knife, it boils down to really two knives: the default and the spicicle. Uh, the only bad thing about the spicicle is, you know, pyros, you know, taking away your knife. Uh, but it, if you're good with your revolver, you can <laughs> uh, you can pretty much just kill them after you get that uh, uh, what, what is it? Fire uh, fire um, invulnerability. And then you know just shoot them dead. Um, default is best because there's no downsides. It's all around perfect I guess you could say. Balanced. Uh, yeah it's balanced. But I still I'm, think the revolver is a little bit overpowered. And uh, no, you want to talk about overpowered go enforcer. No, I mean if you can aim each shot flawlessly, it's still a bit OP. Well, yeah. If you get a godlike ambassador, yeah. You mean like stabby? Yeah, like stabby. But uh, going to watches, it boils down to survivability and picking power, and of course intel. Uh, all three watches work wonders with competitive. Dead Ringer for survivability, just, you know, keeping yourself alive, because it also creates paranoid, knowing that you are not dead, that they still have to worry about you. Uh, default, just for, you know, the picking, the raw picking power, uh, being able to get behind enemy lines, resupply your cloak, and then being, getting the kill, and then leaving, without them even realizing you were even there. And Cloak and Dagger, for like, just basic intel, just staying in a area where they would least expect you and calling out their positions, their uber charge, what's going on point, and dumbass. pretty much just like I said just intel. Uh, a lot of spies will run dead ringer because of the survivability because it gets them away from their enemies but competent spies will alternate all three not letting their enemy know <laughs> what they're up with because if you're swapping all the time they don't know what you're gonna do next and that's the basic thing of a spy you don't want to be predictable yeah like the spy that just runs at their back every single time yeah. you want to be able to get them where they least expect it exactly like when they're going in for a push because especially if you're it, especially when they're going in for a push because they're focusing forward they're focusing on your team go in when you see their medic and his pocket and everyone else run into an area like over here okay. in the process the like this choke over here as soon as they run through there you know uncloak and try and get back to that preferably the medic but if but if you can't get the medic get whatever you can heavier demo heavier demo guess. but either way what you want to do is you want to get them when they least expect it and where they think they're safe, like when they're pushing or uh, capturing a point. They expect people to come at you at a point, but they don't expect the spy to come at you at a point. Yeah, so it's all about suspension, paranoia, and least Surprise. expecting. 
yeah, surprise, and, you know, just being an all-around pain in the ass for the other team. Surprise butt sex? Exactly. Alright, so when it comes to pub games, what Plus. weapons do you suggest to use? Uh, if you're just starting out, which, even if you're not, I would recommend using just default, get familiar with that, just default, you know, stock equipment, get really familiar with that, when you, f uh, because if you're playing Spy and you just begun, you're more than likely don't have any of the unlocks, as you it's start usually, getting... It's usually a good idea to practice without unlocks anyways, Oh yeah. You, if you can play without them, or, yeah, if you can play without them, you can play with them. But, usually. Yeah, anyway... Eventually, you'll unlock this little this little thing, the ambassador. Uh, it crits on headshots, does one or two damage as a fifteen uh, as a fifteen percent penalty for you know just basic body shots and slower. It is slower, but it crits on headshots. Like I said, it's a very unique assassin's tool. <sighs> Drake, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> but pretty much when you unlock this this is when aiming comes into play you want to aim for their heads because because 90 percent of hey drake get over here stand right there my 90 percent of classes when you get the headshot you can immediately body shot and it will more than it will kill them in one shot like snipers scouts some medics and there's one more. Pyro. Engineer? Engineer. Yes. I was engineer. about to say, Pyro is a high health class. Yeah, that's why I was. I, I'm, I'm misinformed. I was confused there for a minute. But when it comes to pubs, you're going to un eventually unlock the Dead Ringer, which does this little thing. Drake hit me. Now, it looks like I died. But really, I'm over here. It's pretty much a damage shield. When I'm in Dead Ringer, I take 90% less damage. That's why ain't one of us. Shut up. But pretty much when... <laughs> Sorry, Drake. I had to. I don't like the dispensers. But that's the main thing of the Dead Ringer. Paranoia, being able to survive. The What I call the ultimate pub loadout would have to be the Ambassador, Default, and Dead Ringer. Because you have the ability to headshot, which 90% of the time when you get a headshot and you kill them with a body shot. So when, uh, you'll be called hacker many times if you're playing really good as a spy. And the and the master is pretty much ninety percent of the reason you be you are called a hacker. But it's fun to do it. It how I look at it too is if you're in a pub and you backstab a medic, and that medic goes pyro, that's a win. It is a straight win because he's not helping his team now. He's going after you. And if you don't die, and you keep backstabbing in that pyro, he you've pretty much taken a guy uh, piece out of play. You've taken that piece on the chessboard and thrown it away. That and it's funny seeing people go in Chicago. Well yeah. Uh another good loadout is uh which way's my spawn? Over there. Alert. The control anyway, I, I need a yeah, so so when it comes to pubs, people will usually get angry most of the oh. time. Oh, yeah. But in of the time, they will. But when it comes to competitive, it's usually 9v9, meaning it's got... It, it, it means they can't rage, quit, or switch classes. They're exactly. stuck with what they are. And with that thing is, it won't stop them from being mad. It won't. If you keep backstabbing, let's say they're medic, they're heavy, they're demo man, you know, pretty much anything, they will start to end up raging at you. And it will just, that will just cause their pyro to get more aggressive. When that happens, 
you want your sniper or anyone to take out that pyro because then guess what you have free reign over their team again so as long as you play with paranoia on your team you know disguise use your disguise as well and everything you can literally be a god and just like the grim reaper himself yeah now when it comes to a level of difficulty on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the greatest, how hard is the learning curve for a spy versus other classes? I would have to say for other classes, spy is by far at least a 9 or a 10. So it's pretty high up because you have a lot of different elements to take into account. Control point is being captured. Yes. And because 90% of people that get uh, you play with will know that there are at least one spy around. What you have to watch out for mostly, because of the learning the curve, your captured. main you know enemy is the pyro, is because of their flames. If I uh, Drake go fi go pyro, but I'm having fun being a free-to-play scout. Be a free-to-play pyro. Okay. But pretty much the pyro is your main enemy when it comes to pubs. I mean, there's the sniper and the scout because of their Gerardi and Mad Milk. But pyro is by far your worst enemy in pubs. And he's also your worst enemy in competitive. Now. Oh, Drake's coming from the, over there. That's right. This is my spawn. But, yeah. uh. It is. Pyro is just a very, very evil class for the spy. Now, you will find yourself, you know, dying to multiple things. And the worst one that I have to say the most humiliating is when a pyro kills you with his homewrecker. <laughs> okay, now, okay, Jake, light man fire. Special thing about the Dead Ringer it sheds fire. But. Okay. Light me. It goes away. He can still light me. This is... Now you can see where I am. So, it is... Because of that, just that one mechanic... Because it also happens with Jurati and Mad Milk. That one mechanic that you're able to see them through their cloak... Is very... It makes the spy balanced. Because yeah, if you yeah. gave him away to just stay cloaked all the time, then he's kind of getting overpowered. Yeah, and if he could stay cloaked while he's stabbing as well, that's pretty yeah, overpowered that's as nice. well. I remember back when I tried spy and I tried to stab people while I was cloaked with the cloak and dagger, and I just keep running, not exactly realizing what happens when your cloak quote unquote runs out. Lol. I remember those days. Now, on the topic of cloak and dagger, what knives would you suggest using with it? Uh, if you're running, uh, is this competitive or pubs? Uh, let's go with public. Okay, public, I would have to say, uh, something that gets great synergy together is the, your eternal reward. It allows immediate, uh, uh let me run to my spawn real quick. But it allows immediate disguising. Like, as soon as you disguise, you're that person. <sighs> now, the only problem with it... Drake, where'd you go? Get down here. The only problem with this is I can't disguise on my own. Dear because, God, that's what I look like. Because of what... Why I say the Cloak and Dagger and the Utrony Ward has such great synergy is the fact that you essentially never run out of ammo. You never run out of cloak. As long as you are staying still, you can stay cloaked as long as you want. That means waiting uh, over here. Like waiting in this choke. Like cloak right here. And as soon as they come by, just uncloak. And then go stab happy with their eternal reward because it's also a silent killer. Which means no death screams. 
And I believe also with a silent killer, it will not register in their team's no. window that you've no, been stabbed. Not. No. If I if I backstab Drake, which I did, it would not come up in the kill feed. So it's essentially you are stealing their soul, their their how should I say their role at that moment. Now, the Ur is not so good in competitive because there's so much communication going on. As soon as you get backstabbed, they're more than likely on vent or mumble or team speak or, you know, some other and as soon as you get backstabbed by it, you're like, oh, that guy's using an eternal reward, I better tell them. The only time I would condone using the eternal reward in a uh, competitive match would be payload. Because there's not that off that uh, where when you break your disguise, it's blocking the payload. You can that's just a kind of go stab happy, chain stab wh whomever's on the cart, you know, NG scout yeah. or something. You can pretty much just clear the cart and then go. And now that they know that you're using the return reward, change. And then you know, just keep yourself mysterious. I guess you could say. Alert! The control point is being contained. All right. Now, if it was in a uh, competitive game, you'd say default knife with cloak and dagger. Uh, depends. Uh, if you're going for more Time intel, run the spicicle. Ninety per um, A lot of a lot of pyros know that there is a slight noise when hit with the spicicle. That when a spy is hit with the spicicle, it does like this melting noise. But if in the midst of chaos, that little noise will be getting rid of because you know you have explosions. Vents going off, etc. Minigun, a Mini huge gun. sounds. Sentry gun. There's a lot of sounds, and that pyro may not hear that. So the longer you can stay, like say in a uh, into a flag room, the more info you're giving your team, the more info you're able to give them, and your staying power is increased. Because the cloak and dagger is mostly intel, so. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're doing intel, you should be running cloak and dagger. All right. Now, when it comes to trick stabs, uh, how would you rate each trick stab in difficulty? Uh, the default, this one, it's a uh, ramp slash stair stab. Isn't that hard to learn? It's pretty straightforward. You jump off of a area of elevation turn toward the back, and make sure you crouch. It's the most basic uh, trick stab that you'll learn. It's the first one you should end up learning. Uh, so, it is one of the easiest. Uh, this one, though, it's a crunch stab. You essentially go up an area of elevation, not looking at your opponent, and you're just crouching backwards. You're giving them a false, you know, that you are running away. Don't do that. So, so in other words, it's a blind stair stab. It's a yeah. You could con you can consider a blind stair stab. The thing is, when you're following someone, they see it happen and they can't really do anything about it. Unless they have extremely good reflexes, but odds yeah. are no. No. As Drake explodes into. Gibbs. Giblets. Okay, then. Uh, corner stabs are really easy. If you, you just have to get the motion down. It's essentially you just go around a corner and then circle back. Because what will happen is when you are chasing someone, you go around a corner and then come back, they're going to do that. Exactly what you did. And that opens up their back to you. Now, the thing is, with me, I don't normally do that anymore it's exactly. come around wide to cut you off yeah you do this but trick stabs in competitive are mostly your last resort like if uh, crunch say a, stabs work crunch stabs are amazing in competitive because they don't really see it coming at all but corner stabs 
are good. Like say a pyro has you lit and you're he's he knows you have he knows you have him. God, I wasn't. I have to keep my push to talk down. Remember this. But essentially, say he's has you on fire. He knows you both know that you're dead. But you will be able to kill him too. With, you know, a corner, a crunch, or some sort of fancy stab that he won't see coming until it's too late. Essentially, you're trading a pyro for a spy. A spy for a pyro. Which big. is big and competitive. This pyro stops jumpers as well. So, um, there's the, you know, blind stab. Which, is there a place in here I could do this? Actually, yes. Right here, this pipe. Essentially, what you're doing is you're... Well, not that, Drake. Get back here. Essentially, they see you. And you're coming up this way. You're getting around... See, he didn't see where... He didn't technically see where I went. I went up and over him. Now, I mistimed that a bit. I'm so. also running gas jockey so I can get around faster. Yeah, that's another thing. I hate gas jockey. Oh, so do I. But, uh, if I have to. essentially, you're making a jump stab, but it's blind. They don't see it coming until, you know, the only thing they see is the knife in their back, and they don't really even see that. Corner jump stab, basically. Corner jump stab suck, too. Fucking, I swear somebody did that to me on that bad water, or not bad water. Uh, now let's see. Ah, this will work, too. Jake, stand right here. What? Stand right here. Where are you? Stand right here. The bet, if you're gonna do, no, look at me. The best stab is, I would have to say, my favorite is the small incline. There's only a small incline here, but it allows me to get over. And you could easily use a teleporter to do that as well. Exactly. I've been tele telestabbed myself and it was quite humiliating because I thought the ground was pretty damn even. So teleprag in a lobby. I would have to say my my favorite stab would have to be the low incline stab when there's just barely enough to get up and over. Uh you know, small stairs, even rails. Anything you could use to jump over them. Exactly. It's the stabs that they don't see that's the best. Alright, and I believe the last two stabs are a drop stab and a yes. matador. Okay, um, Drake, get on the point. I hate this rock. Essentially, it's you doing the, uh, not on the point. You a little forward. Oh, mate. well then. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back in just a second as soon as we reload up. Alright, we're back with the map reloaded. So, we're gonna show a drop stab now. Essentially, a drop stab is what it says, a drop stab. You're dropping from an area of height onto their head. They don't really see it, they don't see it coming unless, of course, they look up. But, you gotta be crouching when this ha when you do this. Oh, come on, you're... There we go. Essentially, you, yeah, you're just dropping from an area of height onto them. And that can actually work for anything, like even this. As long as you're crouching in, to, in the stab. And you have the elevation. As, yeah, elevation, you're crouching, you should be able to connect the, uh, the drops slash whatever you want to call that thing. Slide stab? I don't know. So, sort of like my market gardener when I'm in the air, I have to time it while still yes. being crouched. Exactly. It's essentially your market gardening as a spy. And Matador, this is an interesting one. Matador is probably the hardest, the I would have to here. say, of the, the of the steps. Essentially, you're juking them. You are, you know, you're like Sam fighting Drake here. You know, I'm doing this. I'm gonna go one way. Like, uh, uh, don't hit me. 
you're going one way, but then you're juking around the other way to make him look the other way to expose his back. Uh, okay, let's see if I let's see if we can do this. As we say and dance. Oh, that's bah. Insert epic music. <laughs> Butter knifed. It, it, like I said, it's one. Of the, it's hard to do it like staged. You ascent. It has to be like a spur of the moment type thing. Yeah, if you know someone's going to matador you, you're not going to fall for it. No, and Drake has fallen too many times to my trick stabs. He's I'm caught on. Yeah. I don't do it anymore. Yeah, he's like, unless I get him like mad and he's running at me. Yeah. Now, when it comes to killing a spy that you know is greater than you, is going after them with your melee your best option or your worst option? Uh, like, okay, say, uh, okay, this is actually... If you're a demo man or soldier, it probably is. Yeah, but say, you know, it's two spies. Say that I am on one, say I'm on red, and, like, say Stabby Stabby's on blue. I'm not gonna go at him with my knife. I'm not gonna go at him with my gun. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my dead ringer and leave. Now, if you are fighting a well-known spy that, you know, is known for his headshots and his stabs, your best bet would probably be, if you're a soldier or demo man, to just spam him out. Just spam him out. Don't try for the melee. Yeah. Just make sure, you know, don't go in for this, don't go in with the melee, because there's too good of a chance that he will get you. Yeah, so try and juggle him if soldier, shoot him, yes. whatever to either activate his dead ringer or actually kill him. Exactly. If uh, another thing, if you're a spy and you know for sure you backstab a spy, but you know he's a dead ringer, don't hunt him down. Just say spy dead ringer, and then say where he is. Like say spy dead ringer. Last seen doors. Last seen near red one and two doors. Of course, make the comms as short as possible. Exactly. Like, say, red doors. Alright. But do not hunt him down. Let the pyro deal with him. Ah, wait for him to come back to you. Or do that. But again, I say just let the pyro deal with the spy. I rarely... In comps, as a spy, you'll rarely backstab spies unless you're be like respawning and you see him coming at your medic. Now, when it comes to disguising, what uh, disguises do you want and where? Okay, uh, in like small little corners like this, or actually even better, over here. This little corner here. Oh, you, okay, I see what you are. Wait, what? Oh, okay. It's best to disguise a scout, because he has the smallest, you know, smallest, uh, body, I guess you could say. I, I can't think of the word for at the moment. Hitbox? Hitbox. And not only hitbox, but view model. There we go. He conceals easily in, like, little corners like this. Uh, another good one. Like, not so much in pubs, but in, uh, com uh, not pubs, but not in, not necessarily in competitive, but in pubs. Medic holding the medigun. Because they don't really expect it. I know, I've fallen for that, hoping that the medic is going to heal me, then get stabbed. Yeah, you see, you see the medic coming out, and you go, oh, he's a medic, so you turn your back. And then you realize, oh, he was a spy. Or trick them when they're coming out to mid, to yeah. think that they dropped your uber. Exactly. Now, that's another thing. Wait for your medic to get uber, then go medic, and then, like, do, like, this fake running out, like, you know, you're trying to push, but comms didn't, you know, go through or something, so you die, but you're really dead ringing, and you're just leaving. So they're like, oh, medic down, so they push, and then you push out with their medic, they push out, it's a really, really nasty tactic to do. Sort of like faking a heavy death, too. Exactly. Anything big, if you can fake it, heavy, demo man, 
it, pyro. It, pyro. It can really mess with a team's mind. All right. Oh, there's one more stab we didn't cover. Get on my head, Jake. Oh, God. He knows what it is. This one is fun to do. Place a dispenser Pretty here. much. Place a dispenser here. You're stabbing him in the ass. Ah! Or A. <laughs> Foot stab. <sighs> you can do that one, too. Yeah, but that's that's an overhead. It also works if you're standing on an NG's dispenser. Exactly. The NG's dispenser, that's a mean one. It, it's a useful tool, being able to stand on dispensers and take uh, from them. Another good thing is the fact that they allowed us to take teleporters without being disguised. Because telefrags. <laughs> well, still telefrags. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, I'm... you just left me. There's Drake. Revenge, it's sweet. Anyway, pretty much what you're gonna do is... I, I won't say we just get on top of my head. Pretty much what you're gonna do is, you're looking at their back, but from underneath them. You can connect the stab that way. And it's really evil, because you can do it like off of anything like this. They drop down, you just move one way, they go after you, you move the other way, you connect the stab. Pretty much, uh, if a scout double jumps, you can get them that way, too. Oh, yeah. If they're trying to evade you and you're in a tight quarter, oh, just take this, just take the stab. Either, one, it, you have a 50-50 chance of the stab connecting, and you have a 50-50 chance of, you know, the scout actually killing you. Or butter knifing him to death by accident. Exactly. Now, another thing that occurs is with the Invis-Watch and Cloak and Dagger is blinking. Yes. Uh, what's your best advice on if you get blinked? If you get blinked and say, uh, you know, say red, uh, blue's pushing in here. Say I get blinked, say I'm moving myself, you know, behind them. I shouldn't be coming this way. I shouldn't. I should be going, like, over there. But say I am going this way because, say, you know, maybe Demo Man or Scouts are over there. And I do come this way and say I get blinked by you. Anyone that's over here just saw my blink. So instead of going that way, turn around and just try and retreat and come back another day. A AKA, you know, a later time. E evaluate what they saw and adjust accordingly. Exactly. I, a... I didn't know you were that low health. I'm using a kunai. Oh. Oh, that's some good spread. <laughs> but but overall, blink, try, and go the opposite way of what they saw. Yes. They as see you. Spy, as a spy and competitive, you're pretty much a battleground strategist. You have to make calls and try not to worry too much, I guess you could say. Try to stay calm. And just stay focused. Your main objective as a spy is paranoia and picking. Now, don't get upset if you can't make a pick. Like, you know, say I attacked a medic, but I couldn't kill him. But I did get him low enough to make him force pop. Don't say, you know, don't think that you since you didn't kill him that you didn't achieve anything. You got him to pop his Uber. You scared him into popping his Uber. Now your team has Uber advantage. Or um, you were able to give intel of what's going on where they're at as well. Exactly. Even if you die, just sit there and wait. You know. Or if you get blinked with the cloak, uh, the cloak and dagger, a good way to do that is if you get blinked with the cloak and dagger, say I'm like sitting right here, which I, again, I shouldn't be, but say I get blinked, and they, their instinctive thing is to shoot there. But if you just like move over here if you can, they're going to look out that way, and that way. They won't think they'll look at you right near them. Yeah, because uh... 
Because, you know, you got blinked. You are retreating. Yes. Uh, I, I've seen uh, gameplays in that where the, the Cloak and Dagger Spy gets blinked. He moves. They fire where he was originally. Then he moves back to that same place, and they never seem to fire there again. Yeah, that's a that's an evil thing to do as a cloak and dagger. Thing is, it is effective because it is paranoia in a sense. Exactly, all watches will create paranoia. Like, just say you know, I hit cloak you. Cloak and decloak behind them. That will cause them to do that. Or now, decloak and then cloak again. Yeah, that's another good one. Like, say you're in a safe spot. Like, say you know they're pushing through. Just do this. You know, just cloak and decloak because they think they hear the spy decloak, so they're gonna go investigate and look where he is. They think he's behind him, but really, you know, you're just dicking with them. It, it usually causes me to turn around exactly. to see where he is no. when, in fact, he could be in my exactly. front turn. I get the backstab. Exactly, like say it here, up there. If I did that there, your instinct is to look around behind you, when really I just jumped down and got the backstab on and say your medic. Because the medic will, as soon as he hears it, his instinct will to look behind and back away. I mean, that's what I did as a spot, as medic for my, for troll bait. When I heard a spy decloak, I looked behind and backed away a bit. When, and let the pocket go out front, when that actually caused my downfall. Yes, because I mean, your instinct, it, your instinct is put the meat shield in front of you. Exactly. Uh, and another thing, if you're a spy, don't try and jump. Don't try and trick a uh, jump stab a spy, because it's he can backstab you. Let's faster demonstrate. You. No, you're gonna do it. <laughs> yep. Get up there. No, I want to do it. Essentially, it's don't do it. Cause odds are you'll foot stab him. That played the animation. That played the animation too. Yeah, same here. That will happen. Because your your knife was spasm. But uh, essentially, it takes less time for you to connect the stab than it does for him. Because he has to connect with your back first. When really you just have to look up and back away. Yeah, and you'll end up hitting his feet, which will register as a back. Mission ends in exactly. Look good. Well, I, I think that covers pretty well everything. Any, any last words? Uh, stay away from Enforcer and Dead Ringer. Not Dead Ringer, De Big Earner. Love, All right. the, love the Dead Ringer, love the Cloak and Dagger, love the Invis-Watch. Don't, you know, try and jump step spies. Um, go for big picks. But if you can't make the big Time pick, go for any pick. Literally any pick will help your team. Drake, you just lost squad points. What? Uh, I think the Law of Tranche is actually a good weapon. Oh, it sounds it sound like the Enforcer. <laughs> Spy battle. How they actually do work. Alright. Uh, there is something you need to worry about as a spy, though. Dude! Umbrella hat! <laughs> <laughs> you got the heavy's umbrella hat. I'm gonna rename that the pinky hat. Oh god, I've seen so many of those. But anyway, I recommend you cut that out of the video, because that cause... Why? Rage. They know I'm already a brony. Flame wars in YouTube comments. Bad idea. Dude, yes. the spirit's a brony. I know, but the best way to avoid a brony comment is to not bring it up. Yeah, my, my, my channel has no brony comments. Anyway, uh, another thing to keep in mind. If you're an ambassador spy and there's a revolver spy, if you can land the headshot before he lands the like second hit, you can go for the body shot and pretty much win. But if he gets two shots on you, leave. Do not stick around. Because a revolver spy will always outshoot an ambassador spy. Because of pure, it, it's got faster speed. It has stopping power. Uh, and more damage. Going over the other stuff, uh, the another good 
uh, combination that goes with uh, that goes with synergy is the Diamondback and the Spicicle, and also the Year Turn Reward. Uh, the Spicicle because of Silent Killer, they won't hear their NG just died, and then you know you sap all their crap, and now you have free crits. Uh, the most you can get from one uh, one you know sentry thing. Uh, Nest. One from the sentry, one from the dispenser, one from the teleporter. No, two from the teleporter if it's up. If not, it's just one. Exactly. That's why I prefer to sap uh, teleporters if I'm using a if I'm using the dying back. I prefer to use uh, I prefer to sap the teleporters first. Then I have two in the you know two in the clip. Good way to practice diamondback game. Go exactly. into pubs and just and use just your diamondback. Exactly. Same way with the ambassador and default. Any revolver, actually. I'd say diamondback because it has more ammo, doesn't it? No. Or it does less damage. So it, 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 it does, does less damage. damage. But the ambassador does too on the normal, on normal, you know, uh, normal body shots. It does less damage too. See, only sixty-seven. I'm wearing a group. <laughs> yeah, uh, the group. Oh, mini crit. My bad. Yeah, see, only 49. 48. The no, stop. Another one. <laughs> the default and uh, the default revolver would do like around 50-ish. Maybe even 60. So pretty much, I mean, uh, a set that I would recommend you staying away, but fiddle with. Like, don't make it your main loadout, but, you know, just kind of fiddle with would be the Saharan Spy. Because it is by far one of the most douchebaggy sets out there. Your eternal reward, Letron J, uh, and apparently the, the Letron, the Fez, whatever, and the Fez, because Fezes are cool. So are bow ties. But uh, essentially, it makes all decloak noise disappear. Like, see, you can hear me Almost. decloaking. Yeah. With the, especially with the Dead Ringer, because it has that excruciating large decloat noise, with that set, you pretty much get rid of that. I mean, it's pretty much a. You die, and then you don't realize that they've woken up behind you. Now, I, I still turn around if I've killed a Dead Ringer, and oh, I yeah. know they're wearing the Saharan, because that's even usually the I, first place they go. Even if I see. Even if I, you know just see a, a spy with a fez and I kill him, I look behind myself. That's an easy way to figure out if you have a siren spy, if they're running at you with no no, uh, no disguise and they have a fez on. If they have a fez on, 90% chance that they will be using the entire set. Now, me personally, I just like to use the fez and the default stuff. Yeah, you, you like doing that little thing that, you know, you want them to think you are, but you really you're not. Exactly. Uh, the Letron J, though, it's a really nice revolver for the escape artist. Since you get cloak on head, 15 cloak on head, you essentially become escape an escape artist. Being able to refill your... Uh, now, I don't like I said, you know, stay away from the big earner. But something that a uh, set that does have great synergy together is the Letron J. Big the, earner and the cloak the and dagger. The big earner and the cloak and dagger. Oh, not even the cloak and dagger. Anyone. The, the, the dead ringer. The the big ringer set. The big ringer. Exactly. Because you have two ways of getting your cloak back: backstabs and shooting. And the more you dead ring the more times they th they're going to buy it. Like, say, I dead ring five times in a row, which I can do, and Jake hates that. So does Zed. But they finally, you know, just either give up saying, you know, screw this, or, oh, he's dead, finally. And then when they're gone, you do your work. Exactly. You should look at yourself right now. That looks painful. It does. I was watching that. I couldn't let it go on any further. I gotta turn on... Oh, hold on, I gotta enter the Archon password, turn SVGs and rapid fire on. But... Uh, what else? Uh, let me look at my loadout. 
my stuff. Um, the Enforcer is good. It, I won't say that it's like should use it all the time, but if you want to like troll people, something that has great synergy together is the Enforcer and your Eternal Reward. No, usually when I think troll spy, dead ringer, spy skull enforcer. Doctor Enforcicle. Now Time has been added. <laughs> headshot. And with that longer cloak, you know, the uh, default and uh, cloak and dagger was pretty much out of the excuse. Why would you use that? Thing is, since You're the dead ringer triggers instantly, it essentially got rid of that. So you had no like downfall for the up. You were just getting a straight upgrade, which shouldn't be done. The Enforcer really is just kind of one of those broken weapons. The nerf yeah. wasn't even really a nerf. But the thing is, the fact that they added that it was random critical, no random criticals, was a godsend. And you have to be undisguised to have yeah. that bonus. Which is why the your eternal ward works good with it, because you have some way of defending yourself when you don't have a disguise. With, now, if you can get the Yura going really good, then that's okay. But, there's always going to be that one time that you're going to backstab, but he's going to turn around at the last second so you break your disguise. You have some way of defending yourself. You don't just die. Some people just use the Enforcer just because it has a damage bonus. Which is the sad part. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, advice to any new players to spy. Would you say just use your stock to get practice in? Or is there any weapons you'd suggest to stay away from? Um, I would have to say... You stock at first, just you stock, because that's pretty much what you're going to be rolling 90% of the time. Because there's no downside, it's balanced. You can pick up ammo with your Viz Watch, your knife comes with no bat, you know, downsides, no upsides, it's balanced. Same way with the revolver. Uh, just roll default set until you feel really comfortable. Then, you know, use Ambassador, use. Um, Dead Ringer, Cloak and Dagger. Essentially, you know, just practice with the items. Now, ones I recommend staying away from is Big Earner and Enforcer. Because it enforces bad play styles. Uh, it encourages bad habits, basically. Yeah. Uh, a good uh, knife to use, though, is the Kunai. Yes, you lose, you know... Caution. What was it? Hold 65 on. health. 65 health, which is leaving you with only 60 health. But the upside is, when you get a backstab, you get overhealed to that amount of health. It's insane. So, you, you're sitting there chain-stabbing, you don't have to worry about anyone behind you unless it's another spy. Unless, or unless they have crits. Oh, you see? You can still see me. Yep, you glow red. Exactly. It's a very... I hate the Jurati. I hate the Jurati Bushwhacker combo getaway. He's got a pan. When in doubt, pinky out. The one time I don't have my bloody dead ringer. But. You know, you'll eventually get a hold of, you know, a diamond back. A Letron J, a 
a uh, spicicle, a year, a um, kunai, and you'll eventually get a hold of them and just play around with them. Pretty, pretty much just feel what's good for you. I mean, there's no way I can actually say, you know, this set's good. Because it's good for me. This set's good for me, but it might not be good for the next part, guy. So pretty much just, you know, just fool around and find out what's good for you. If you find, you know, if you find defaults good for you, then by all means, use default. Like how I use complete default as spy, usually. I hate you. Hey, it's a strange Gerardi, man. I hope you washed it. Ugh. Wait, I need, what? A, I need to take a bath. Wait, washed what? Your hands. And that jar. But, uh... Uh, things to watch out for, though. Mainly as a spy. Snipers with Jurati, because... Especially with a bushwhacker combo. Ugh. Which yeah. is pretty much one of the most common sets used in the game. Needs to be banned. Like, from competitive. That failed horribly. I didn't... I thought you were back... Oh, okay. That hit. But beware of huntsmen's too. Like, don't try and go at them with your knife. Don't try and go on. I wouldn't recommend them going out at all. But I mean, hell, if you want to, go ahead. Yeah, because just as any class, you don't want to kind of. Because they just, because they can use that little bow they had there. He had there, and just kind of spam. You know, just click like. And it can Shoot get really down annoying. hallways. Get kills. Uh, it's known as the Luxman, or you know, the more other trolls. Men. I I want to call it something else. Oh, he has a sniper rifle. And I've been practicing. Well, maybe he's viewed my sniper 101 video. Nah, I've watched Max some of Max's gameplays. To uh, upcoming spies, uh, people, Yay. I recommend that you you find. I'm gonna take you to the Bane Train. But, you know, uh, after I collect the 54, I start finding them. But, um... You people I recommend... On my oh, hold on. I'll finish that after. Just lay your weapons down and walk away. Alright, so we're gonna finish up here. But, uh, yeah, uh, things to watch out for mostly, you know, just... Just be aware of your surroundings. Always look before you make a stab. See if anyone's gonna notice you. The best stab is when no one's around, like on a sniper. Just be wary of your surroundings. Be wary of you know what everyone's using. Things you need to watch out for is bloody Gerardi. because it causes mini credits. That should have been uh, headshot on you. Now, people to watch out for. People to watch, I mean, if it's okay, I'm going to recommend a few people that they should watch. Uh, yep, go right ahead. I'll link their channels in the description. Uh, people that you need to look for and watch is What's Your Deal's uh, Spy Guide. He literally lays out everything. And he's pretty much what helped me get to spy. But, you know, just watch him. Watch this. Watch your head, Drake. How did that... Oh, you're a sniper. And, you know, just... Watch him. And, uh... Watch St some Stabby Stabbies. Just because, you know, Stabby Stabby is a god. I mean, he is. He's a god among TF2. And, and I like to recommend uh, Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, too. That's right. Oh, and Tobias Funk. Yeah, those are they, some of the big spy names that I recognize. Uh, Tobias, if you want to improve your kunai gameplay, look at Tobias. He's a, he's known as the kunai spy. Alright, so that'll wrap things up. 
I'd like to say thanks to Dark and Drake for helping out. So, hope this helps you guys learning a bit more about Spy. Uh, I will put links in the description for Dark's channel and for the mentioned spies as well. So, you guys have a nice day.